Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. If you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. Well, 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 welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. It is indeed a Midgard Musings production, and I am indeed your host, Jesse. Uh, good to see you all and hear uh, from you all, even though I'm not listening to you right now. It's good to, uh, to, good, good to be here with you again and in your virtual presence. I uh, just want to say thank you again to all my listeners, supporters, subscribers, followers, patrons, members, friends, all of you. Um, just want to make sure that you are all aware of how much I appreciate you and thank you for your constant and ongoing support. Got a uh, neat kind of impromptu guest lined up for us today <clears throat> here on the, today's episode. Um, this uh, this guest kind of just, um, I don't know, like we, we, we don't talk much um, on a regular basis, um, but uh, we, we recently just had like a, a random conversation uh, over Facebook and um, said, hey, man, do you ever listen to my podcast? Do you ever think about coming on as a guest? And he was like, I really don't know. You know, don't really listen to podcasts that much, but uh, kind of a neat guy. And I'm hoping that between uh, our history together, how we've met, you know, which was through the music scene, actually, some years ago, um, and maybe today in today's uh, podcast that we'll get to know each other a little bit more um <clears throat> so you know he's he's definitely a uh, an interesting fella in terms of uh the, the mystery surrounding him maybe that's just me being me right now because like we don't talk that much i don't have a lot of great dealings with him but i don't know he just has this kind of like aura <laughs> of mystery about him and when you guys see him uh, today, uh, for those that are watching on the, you know, video platforms for this podcast, uh, you'll 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 kind of see what I mean. He's just he's got this really, you know, awesome wizardly um, demeanor and and this aura and stuff about him. And I'm hoping that uh, we get to learn a little bit more overall. He's he's a musician. Uh, we're actually going to listen to um, like a like a demo uh, of a song for one of his many projects. He's got several here in the middle Tennessee area uh, that I'm aware of at least he also manages I believe his own label um, has has and has put out a number of um, songs and, and and albums or EPs I can't remember all of which but we're going to get into talking you know about some of that stuff here when he comes on but before he does I want you guys to listen to this this is a this is a track that is currently um it's in like a demo stage, right? But it's, I don't know, it's its really, really gnarly. And this is just kind of like covers just the s scratching of the surface level. So, you know, today we don't know yet what we're going to be getting into. We're going to be talking about some of his music. We're going to be talking about why he's on a heathen podcast. He, he actually owns a set of runes that I made 
uh, years ago. I uh, one of the very first rune sets that I sold um, during the Nashville Pagan Pride event, um, which is an annual event. Um, the, the the first year that I uh, was a vendor there and selling some wood burned crafts that my wife and I made. Um, one of the rune sets that um, I had for sale there, he purchased. Um, and that, that's kind of the, the, the way the conversation started with us just the other day. Like, you know, we, I follow his stuff on social media. He follows me. Um, but like just the conversation that we had randomly the other day was, hey, man, uh, you know, I, I still have your runes and I, I still work with them. And, you know, the runes that I bought from you, rather the ones that you made, I still have them and, and, and whatnot. And it was just a really touching thing to hear from someone who I don't have regular conversations with. Um, but that still, nonetheless, felt it, you know, uh, expedient to let me know that the the thing that I, you know, made, not necessarily for them, but that they, you know, purchased uh, through me is is serving them well and is and and that they're they're able to find good use um, for them, you know. So uh, without further ado, guys, I'm going to uh, introduce. His name is Ryan, by the way, Ryan Clackner. Um, and so for any of like the middle Tennessee folks that are listening and watching um, some of the bands that have uh, come through uh, Ryan's mind, you know, his, his mind child, as it were, the project that he's been involved in, you, you will hopefully be aware of. Um, but uh, yeah, this, this song that I want to just play with you before we, we get him on here, this is um, uh, a track that he's demoing currently. He, he just shared it a couple of days ago. Um, for a band or for a project called Existential Dread, and it's slow, kind of droney doom metal. Um, if you think of bands like Sun, uh, stuff like that, I think you guys will, uh, if you're into that sort of thing, you'll you'll really dig this. But anyway, um, this is that demo idea you shared on social media, so it's it's out here for the for the listening uh, enjoyment of everyone and anyone. So let's take a listen to it real quick, and then welcome in. Ryan Clackner um, to the show today. So here we go. Right. All right. Yes, that was uh, that was a track, guys and gals out here listening and watching. That was a track, like I mentioned before, from uh, one of Ryan's projects and uh, Existential Dread. Now, I've got Ryan Clackner here. And like I mentioned to you guys, when you see this man, when I told you before that, you know, a very wizardly looking gentleman, uh, Ryan, welcome to the podcast, my man. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh, so, like I said, you know, the guy reminds me, you know, you probably heard this a lot, um, Ryan, just like the wizard aspect. You kind of look like Saruman in his prime. <laughs> uh, you know, you're getting, getting some of that gray going on in the beard, but um, I, you've, and you've probably also heard of the, uh, and this may not be as flattering, but the Rasputin. Um, I've been, dude, I've been telling people that I'm really doing for years. It's a total lie, but I've been saying it for a long time. I I got a tattoo on my arm too. Do you? Yeah. It's appropriate. You you're not you're not a sex magician, are you? Or maybe a, a sex magician. I don't he, think was, so. wasn't he known for something like that in in the Romanov dynasty or whatever? He was like a he was a weird fella. He had all kinds of weird things going on. Interesting angles for sure. Yeah. 
but yeah, man, thanks for coming on the show today and um, yeah. just talking about whatever, right? We've got some, we got plenty of time to just kind of rap about things. But um, for those that uh, were, were, you know, listening and watching today, the the music side of things, if it's cool, like mm-hmm. we we listened to a, a brief demo version of something from Existential Dread. Mm-hmm. Now that is, is that one of your projects or is that something that you're producing? No, it's mine. Yeah, okay. And you've gotten a number of them, right? Like you're not, you're kind of a, 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 all kinds of stuff going on at the same time, multiple projects, right? Yeah. Existential uh, was, so, so last year I um, started a little label called Moonlight Cypress Archetypes, which um, <clears throat> was sort of, I had had, uh, Stumptail, as I'm sure you remember, and then yeah. kind of turned into Primeval. And Existential Dread started back somewhere in there four or five years ago. It took me forever to get the album done. Um, and I just was kind of at a loss for ideas. And so uh, eventually with you know the pandemic and the attendant free time that came with it, uh giving me a, a, an open door that ended up becoming actually the second album that i released on the new label last year so what you heard the demo that is um it's just a demo of ideas that will um, eventually get recorded properly for the second album which i think at this point is probably gonna have to wait until 2023 anyways but it's just something that i felt inspired to um explore kind of an idea where the first album i feel like in some ways it kind of missed the mark like i was too had my head too full of like black metal and shit like i I couldn't like slow down enough to do something that open and so like what you played in the the um, intro there is all along the idea for existential dread was this way of trying to musically conjure up the badlands which is a place that i went to first on tour and then i had a experience where i went up there <clears throat> alone camping about um i think it was four years ago so and had a pretty uh mystical for lack of a better word experience there um it's pretty impossible to be alone in a place like that and not be extremely aware of why a place like that would have significance to the native populations that were there previously and still are there much yeah. more so than they are in our part of the world. Um, and and I still am kind of working through it. Like the... Uh, How long say, were you up there for that? Like for that, week. Like, like a okay. week. I had a friend in, <clears throat> in the middle of Nebraska who... <clears throat> um, I went and stayed with him. He... Uh, tattooed my chest and then I went up there and just had this quest of sorts where I just wandered around alone and I mean man it was incredible hard to put into words really and um yeah I actually had something similar to that um on a on a smaller scale but on a on like we talk about like mystical experiences uh I would say that it was a shamanic journey of sorts right because there was there was the incorporation of elements that helped get me there you know and if that's the same thing that we're talking about if we're touching on the same kind of wavelengths here then i then i i know a bit about what you're talking about and unless i'm unless i'm like way off of the mark here well my friend there initiated me into uh what i have kind of jokingly and lovingly referred to as the cult of the mushroom yep (laughs) Yep. i had previously not been exposed to 
a couple yeah. of fun guys we are already. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it definitely, um, you know, in retrospect, I think flavored the experience, and it was a very, um, <sighs> shamanistic is, is definitely yeah. a word that I would use. Um, I can recall a time while in basically in the middle of that time that I was there again um, being aided by interstellar travel devices of a uh, fungal nature that sit I had found <clears throat> this I wouldn't call it a mountain and it wasn't technically one of the you know um sharp escarpments as we you know tend to see the the badlands or visualize them a very steep hill basically that just like and i was in the wilderness section which is like so if you're familiar with the south dakota badlands there's a wilderness section and then and it doesn't have a gate and i was just like man i'm, I'm just not paying the 20 dollar gate fee i'm just gonna go in there and and <laughs> yeah. you, you know, that's where they said the buffalo are and there's no people and i was like that's definitely sounds good going. you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the road, the road no is like, people buffalo sure <laughs> the road is unpaved for like five miles going in you know i was like yeah that's that's definitely what i'm doing so i you know i find this place and i go and i climb up it and i sit there and you know like true to form and that kind of experience i felt the um uncontrollable urge to take off at least my shirt mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and it was in, in november and we're talking about south dakota man so it was cold and I, I had my experience in november and it was in tennessee but i mean it was on a night where it got down into like the teens and 20s yeah it was like so, that I, yeah i mean man i never felt it i never felt warmer in my life yep. and it was one of these things where you know out there um the sky is bigger, so to speak. Oh, yeah. Know? And I'm sitting on this cliff. And I can tell the way the clouds are moving. But if I look back, that there is going to be a definite point in time where there will be no more clouds. And it's just like, of course, that's a full moon night, not planned. Okay. It just happened. And that's also like the 50th time in my life that that had happened up to that point which was already now four years ago but anyway and I'm sitting there and I just know that like if I just sit here and just wait it out that I'll have some kind of like revelatory moment and it will be just me and the open prairie and the badlands and the full moon and that's it like the world is gone. I knew it. So I just waited. And I think it actually took like <clears throat> at least an hour, you know, and when the moon finally came all the way out, it produced some kind of, you know, like some people might call it like a DMT experience or something, some kind of like third eye thing where I could tell that yeah. it was, <clears throat> there was psychic movements happening that i was not uh I, I wasn't making it happen yeah it, it it loosened something in there yep and i can still remember it like it happened yesterday though i would i think i would do a pretty shit job of trying to explain it i can feel it so to speak in my body like i can feel the memory you know yeah now, did this happen this past November? No, no, this was four years ago now. But, okay, yeah. So I've been, <laughs> so to take it home, existential dread is, is like forever going to be associated with that in my mind. Mm. Uh, because I had already started it. I had conceived of it in the Badlands on a, on a stump tail tour, uh, shit probably six or seven years ago we actually had to camp in the badlands we played in montana and then the next gig was over in like bismarck or something and it just took forever to, we, there was no way we were going to get all the way across yeah so we just stopped and cowboy camped in medora north dakota and 
like we didn't even have tents or anything we were just literally sleeping on the ground like wow right. that, <laughs> that that was the initial idea for existential the next time i went back was in south dakota and since then i haven't been back but i have still been you know when you have this kind of experience like it's not just a one and done like it's it's kind no. of you forever you are changed forever you exactly. are changed forever it pre yeah. it reprograms the very essence of what you are and i truly believe that when done uh correctly or, or when done and experienced properly your ego dies yeah like you lose yourself and re and are reborn in a different way and your life is never the same after that <clears throat> It, no. it was um, very much that sort of thing. And I also think, well, in relation to the new existential dread, first of all, I felt like the one that's out now is it just didn't stack up to the vision. So I feel like I don't really give a shit about existential dread in a lot of ways outside of the fact that it's like my job, some kind of duty that I have to like... Mm. <laughs> You got to see it through. I have, to, I have to like make good on what happened. Right. There. And the first album, while it's really good, and I mean, I love it. And it's like, you know, it's a, a child of mine, so to speak. Sure. It, I just know that we're, that what you played is much closer to the truth of the idea that I had had all along. And, and closer, I would say, energetically, um, if you want to use that word or psychically and i don't mean psychically as in some new age esp yeah like the old stuff like Psycholo the old psychologically in a very for lack of better sense pagan meaning um yeah. you know a very palpable and felt thing so um you know that that's where that's going um and i just felt i don't know some kind of random no, that really, it really likes to share it. It speaks so much to test it on people, really. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think hearing that explanation and hearing kind of this, the, the inspiration, or at least the maybe not the original inspiration, but like where it has become be, due to your uh, experience, right? Yeah. Dude, because of it, like it, it paints up such a bigger picture after listening to even just a, a short, you know, less than a minute long. Yeah. blurb of it because i was like hey guys you know if you like bands like sun right yeah, yeah it's just yeah. like drone metal doom or whatever like but it's more than just music it's it's because it's it's ambience it's noise it's vibrations it's things that we experience when we do things like what you're describing going on those shamanic or spiritual mystic journeys as it were right because we become more in tune with the vibrations of the world and the universe around us that you don't feel on a regular basis, not at least until you've kind of ventured off into those places and done those certain things. And then after that, you're like, maybe not all the time, but like, man, there are still, like you were talking about having those memories four mm -hmm. years after the fact. I mean, I'm, <laughs> you know, just like five months. Well, no, not even four, two, November, December, three months. Yeah, three months after it. I'm still getting those kind of like memories where I'll uh, I'll uh, <clears throat> hear a certain thing or I'll look at something. I mean, like I said, I was laying in bed the other day and my wife has this huge, like four foot long stuffed animal. It's a sloth or it's supposed to be a sloth, but it's like very animate, like it's very animated looking. So it's got like rainbow colored fur, you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's not like true to an actual sloth by any means, but I was like laying there and this was like, I don't know, uh, mid morning or so, like I was awake. I wasn't lucid. I had not been consuming any sort of alcohol or anything like that. Like I was completely sober. And I just remember saying there, laying there looking at this stuffed animal who's obviously inanimate and the fur was moving, man. Like I'm telling you, like there was like, I'm like, Oh, it's here. Here we go again. <laughs> it's one of those, one of those memories kicking in, you know, like where did this, and it only lasted maybe like a minute or so. But I was yep. fixated on it and I couldn't turn it back. And there's, you know, the trees look a certain way. The, the water feels a certain way. Like oh, different yeah. things just become so much more pure, I feel. And you catch those nuances of life 
that exist but that we don't always capture in the moment yeah you know the life itself not our minds version of it yeah like oh man like the perception of it all is yeah. is, is skewed without that without okay. resetting without going back to that pure the uh the perception can just become I mean, people, some people verbalize it as the perception can become more clear, more pure, but I feel like it's what you're really doing is perceiving what I just like loosely call in capitals, the other side, which is just the, you know, yeah. for me, just like an easier way to. Um, or sides even, man, because I mean, the, the multidimensional aspect of existence, I don't know, it's, you were talking about your experience in being was it an actual full moon if i remember right you were saying it was a full moon and you just kind of happened to be there at that moment or yeah yeah ours was too yeah or at least within a couple of nights of it actually being full and right. again just that presence her presence i like to say like her presence was so much but more vibrant and yeah. uh authoritative in a way like she don't mess around man and, and i mean like she was just laying it on me i remember sitting there at one point trying to I don't know, in my own way, level with that energy. Uh -huh. And it was like, sit down, boy, you ain't got no business trying to do this right now. Like you got no business, like just sit down and, and, and absorb it, kind of take it and learn. <laughs> don't try to match me right now. Cause you're, you're not going to be able to. And I was like, Whoa, okay, mama. Like mm -hmm. just, <laughs> it was, it was, it was, and it's interesting that we're, we're talking about a project of yours that's called existential dread because guess what man you are feeling that during those moments at least at some point i mean i was it was there it, it went it came in waves but man at some points i was terrified and it was dreadful but in a way that didn't make me feel like unsafe yeah. if that's if that's you know accurate way to put it i think i guess everybody has different experiences but it was it was dreadful <laughs> in I some mean, ways that kind of stuff can get pretty intense um yeah i in a lot of ways uh, i don't know if you're familiar with terence mckenna or not but oh yeah i've at varying points tried to follow his prescribed uh so heroic like, dose well and the regularity and oh, okay i've done it both ways where it was irregular it was the dose it was smaller i've never done more but I've had a few times where it was on that scale dosage wise and unexpected people showed up and it got really fucking bad. Ooh, and yeah. Yeah. To, like, so there was a time in up in the mountains here where um, <laughs> I was <laughs> out there and somebody showed up, man, it was, it got, real weird yeah. but um there's been other times that like so this is actually one that i wanted to talk about i was kind of gonna bring this up anyway but i had this experience two actually that i think are probably specifically relevant to to this podcast and how I've kind of met you and so on and so forth. And it was that once um, still in Nashville, I was like, I mean, I've, I've been effectively sober for like 11 years, but I get, you know, and 12 step and all of that, but I have these little windows and they're always in the summer. I don't know why, where I developed this one, two month long, need to partake in cannabis which i normally could give a shit about and i don't typically want anything to do with it because it gives me anxiety and always has but on one of these little mental voyages that i set myself out on i, I just also like it was never a mild experience for me i always just wound up having experiences while stoned that people would talk about as being more like kind of mushroomy for lack of a better word and right. one of them which I wanted to tell you about was that I was sitting in my room I think and 
out of nowhere, I started having this feeling like I lived now in the back of my mind. And I was looking at the back of my skull forward and my forehead was a prison bar, bars like across here, right? And I'm like looking out from the back of my head, kind of up above too though, like as if there wasn't actually a top on my head. And there's this man who looks like, you know, a much older version of me holding the bars, shaking the bars, trying to get out. And he reveals himself to me to be Odin or Votan or however. And he says, you have to let me out. And, you know, I was like, well, I have no <laughs> idea what to tell you, mister. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I didn't put you in there. <laughs> like let you out. How who let you in the first place? I mean, I mean you know, I was like, man, I, I I've been chewing on that one for a while now. Um so yeah. like the perception was like you were looking behind him and he was trying like to I get out, just, or he was looking at you from your perception of the back of your mind. Like, how was like, it he, like I was standing against the wall of the of the room the the skull prison room that we yeah. were both temporarily in and um <clears throat> and it wasn't long after that that the primeval well album came out mm. and i do feel like existential dread, for example, has nothing to do with that kind of energy. Right. And primeval, whether I wanted it to or not, is like full of it. Yes. Uh, and it was not intentional, but the name, for example, Primeval Well, came to me. Um, my parents live in Montana and I was with them uh shit two two winter three years ago now um they live out in western montana in the middle of nowhere in a valley between two large sets of mountains um and i i just like i had been reading the lore quite a bit you know about the varying uh like the Jackson Crawford books and the other books that yeah. were older than his versions and all that kind of stuff. And just, just exploring it all. Mm. And the idea of primeval, well, for whatever reason came to me, you know, about the, the myth about him throwing his eye down in the well and all of that. And yeah. Um, and my grandfather had a well on his property that was also out in, in the woods and the well had been covered up because apparently in back in the old days somebody had killed a woman and threw her down there and they never could find the body and it was just this like spooky place that I would stick my head into when I was a child and, you know he would always tell me you know you know you don't want to <laughs> you don't get you just gonna reach up there and grab you don't want to mess with whatever that is down there we we haven't opened that there was just the old sheet of plywood across it and he said we don't move that you, you don't yeah you probably don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> and I've seen movies about stuff like that. You know, you read, you read those old folk tales from different areas. It's like, exactly. I mean, the mythology or the metaphysical, um, well, there is the mythology, but like the metaphysical uh, significance of the well, we, it, it's lived out even to this day in some heathen uh practices in some heathen yeah. circles you know um even amongst us we have a um in in our tribe right we even have uh during our sumble ritual we have a representation of the well that we speak over that we put our drinks and we put our words into uh, to solidify luck and to and to do things that it, it because it, it 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 absorbs everything it takes in everything but it also doesn't um diminish things like it, it what, what you put into the well stays there it doesn't like eventually the more layers that get added to it it's not like a river that just washes away it's just layer upon layer upon layer yeah you know so the like that the element is is a very i think living thing to in within maybe not just germanic heathenry but maybe in other 
you know, <clears throat> polytheistic, you got yeah. cauldrons, wells, you know, things that are used in, in other magical uh, or metaphysical per, for, for those purposes, right, that mean yeah. those types of things. So there's a, there's a lot of, I think, power to, to that imagery, you know, having a name to something mm -hmm. like this that just kind of catches all of that like you say, influence from a, maybe another past experience. Like it's really interesting to think about that whole aspect of it now that you mention it. Well, it was interesting too that the name came to me while I was with my parents because that was my mother's father that was on his land. And I was uh, very, very close with my grandparents. More, I would say, I think than probably most kids. I just followed him around everywhere. Like I was pretty, I was kind of obsessed with him. And he was a World War II vet. He was a Marine on Okinawa. And, you know, by the time I was about 10 years old, I think he had told me all of the war stories that he had been holding on to for like a very long time. And uh, so my mom, uh, she has a sister. So it was, it was him and a bunch of women. And he, I just don't think he had anybody to talk to until I came around. I'm the older of two. And, you know, he just would just talk very freely about old things and old ways and old wars. And, you know, I mean, he knew, he knew civil war veterans, you know what I mean? Like, this is, we're going way back. He yeah. remembered them at least, you know? Wow. So, yeah, so he was, yeah, so he was, you know, born in the 1930s, so he knew, you know, the sure. older among them, but the the last of the actual living. Yeah. Wow. Um, and, uh, and I just, like, kind of understood um, innately as a child that this was a kind of living transmission if you will of mm -hmm. stories and ideas and viewpoints um attitudes etc that came from a previous time sure. which was largely informed by i mean dude you're talking at that point you're talking the beginning if not predating the industrial revolution he was yep. more connected to that then, yep. or at least equally connected um, mentally, I guess you could psychologically for sure. You know, he had modern cars and electricity and all that crap, but it was, he also grew up in the depression. So we're talking about a very, again, uh, in a mythological sense, uh, if you will, a well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Going all the layers way. being added right like you know we're not there yeah. anymore but it, it doesn't mean that it, it's not any less important because it it, yes. it it lays down that foundation of why there's something to build off of or why there's a layer yeah. added on top of it and that's what we talk like uh you may have heard that term or log or yeah. like that's it's that it's that let literal primordial layer that 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 bottom sort of uh founding spot in the well where right you know we 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 can't help but ignore it because it's it's where we come from it's it's part of where we're from however far back you want to try to go right like it's it's there it's that underlying layer of existence and, and origin to that you know our our luck comes from our stories good and bad like it's all down there <laughs> right it doesn't just go away um right but that that's interesting that uh, you know your your living experience um, at, at at you know with your grandparents and and, and your family, uh, what were would you say? I mean, or could you recall was anything about that that you would today call pagan, like well, as we call it as a as a title as a name, right? Oh, we were pagans, or not really, but it just like has connotations or undertones of paganism and and some of those kind of like I say maybe inherent things that it did any of that exist for you that you would call it as such now back then i was thinking about that i went out running earlier and i was and uh, just running around in the woods i have this place there's a few of them around here so i live in south knoxville and there's this little place around here called the urban wilderness 
and it's this set of trails that the city had made to try to woo all these west coast bicycle riders out here and try to get them to quote unquote get outside this area neighborhood whatever and Kind of like the greenway around here, man. I don't know if you remember like Murfreesboro, the, the Stone River Greenway and all the, yeah, yeah stuff like that. Yeah. They've got all these trails and, and whatever, all this horse shit out here all over the place now, but I like to go running out there and there's, there's one spot in particular where the hills are pretty, pretty brutal. And I, I call it the sacrificial hill. And <laughs> it's just like, I'm the fucking sacrifice, <laughs> you know? And, right. uh, <laughs> Um, I was out there running around and I was thinking about this and I was like, man, you know, I've had these ideas before. And, and my, I mean, to be honest, like, you know, if I had ever dared to call my folks or my grandparents or anybody in my bloodline pagan, they, oh man, they would, they would lose yeah. about it. Right. Go completely nuts. But I have noticed and I've always known that um, <clears throat> my father whose blood is absolutely Germanic. Um, that's German, but also Scottish, British, and all that. No, um, all, no um, Nordic, but like German and- Mainland uh, Germania, uh, the Saxony yeah. type, maybe mm -hmm. Frisian, those in the mainland. I would, I would say Frisian, exactly. Yeah. Because <laughs> that would include parts of, you know, Eastern Scotland, Eastern England or whatever. Yeah. Um, he, dad has always been a, like a out avid outdoors person. We've, we've never to this day talked about why, but I can only assume being, you know, I'm about to turn 40 and I know what it means for a man to spend a lot of time alone in the woods at this point. You know what I mean? Like there's, yes. there's more than just the sport element and and i mean i'm talking about the guy was gone survival camping and fishing in montana like 20 before i started playing guitar i started playing guitar 25 years ago this past christmas so we're talking about a long time now he was doing back helicopter backpack drops into remote alaskan islands like seriously. they make like documentaries about this stuff like, now and he was seriously. just doing it casually just to <laughs> he, he did it he did it so long they finally started asking him to guide and now he oh, lives wow. in Montana and he's guiding out there so um so there's there's his side and then on mom's side they my grandparents lived in the woods you couldn't see the neighbors houses and there was definitely a understated reverence for nature as a unspoken living entity. I can I can recall Graham saying that it was I can't quote her because we're talking about a long time ago now, but just that it was that it bothered her that they would tear down huge sections of the forest to put in like really what we now call like McMansions and subdevelopments and all that. This yeah. is when all that, that sh sh corporate looking ultra generic pre-planned neighborhood horseshit that, you know, is very, very modern. They didn't grow up with that. You know what I mean? Right. Like where, where they grew up in the town that they were from, still to this day if you were to drive through it all the houses are 100 years old they haven't modernized anything it's just that's just how they live and also What's homestead living you know not, well, not subdivisions they weren't homesteaders but they were they were like from from like they were both uh pure-blooded like she was slavic her and her my grandma's grandma and grandfather came over here as they were Slavs and they, Slovak, sorry, um, they were Slovakian. And then their kids met at the Slovak dance hall in their town. <laughs> wow. And those kids were pure Slovak. That's my great grandparents. 
So my grandmother was second generation American, but still deeply rooted in those yeah. and and cooked that way yeah. all my life. And my mom grew up eating that kind of food and hearing those stories to whatever extent, I don't really know. But, um, and my grandfather's was the same, but French. And that's, this is mom's side. So um, I just feel like I wouldn't call it pagan, but they had a, I think that would be a stretch and probably yeah. a bit too much romanticizing. Well, they had a, a, a definitively old world Yes. And not American sort of attitude towards yeah. like they didn't see it in any way that I would call as being this uh like um this is here for me and I'm gonna just trash it and do whatever I want with it. They they lived in in a in a wooded place. They kept all the woods, they were very like deliberate about keeping all the trees and making it so that the place kind of in a lot of ways like felt almost like a sanctuary um, yeah it was very calm very preserving calm. the natural beauty and the, the natural mm -hmm. integrity and and respecting they the... didn't take down yeah like they didn't take very many trees down like he cut the driveway out himself he paved and they lived on the side of the hill too so it was like a pretty serious job yeah um and and uh, and they you know they always had a lot of wild animals in the property and never messed with them or anything like that including bears and like sometimes oh yeah but <laughs> caribou who knows i mean it's montana right i mean no they squatches uh, or where <laughs> i didn't grow up in montana no i actually grew up in new jersey um, oh wow okay well i'm from new york you know there's some pretty crazy places in jersey and new york too you know this yeah this was in northern new jersey and Rip van winkle baby lower cat the cat skills you know what i'm saying i actually know that <laughs> that's yeah. i mean also that's my old was, stomping grounds dude cat skills and all that yeah i was gonna touch on that too because i do feel like the northern people have a kind of more um what i would feel like is a more direct route to anything pagan ish because in the south here the christianity is is very strong and i and it's arguably the last christian nation if you will on the planet um yeah in I mean, like even look at how the indigenous people were were forced by the invaders by you know the white european invaders to uh to to, to change their life and, and and forcibly and violently and, and tragically so like it's 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 a travesty and it's it's absolutely horrible to talk about it and think about it that that was a thing but like when we talk about things that are pagan right or i say things that are pagan i mean it's old world stuff and it's and it's stuff that exists in so many different uh cultures around the world but but north america the united states being as as young as as it is and as we are and and being kind of just thieves of, of of cultures it's it's such a i mean maybe i'm using words that are a bit harsh right because it is it's a melting pot of culture there there's immigrants this that's literally what this nation was built on was a nation of immigrants you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um so you got so many different influences that that are in uh you know the 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 the, the northeast is is very heavily uh germanic right there's a lot of dutch and, and German uh, settlements and stuff over here. And you got all kinds of, you know, and, and it transitions different places, different areas. There's a lot of Scottish uh, Celtic influence down yeah. here in the South. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, just kind of like where people ended up at the time. But um, I think maybe like what I was looking at is like, even though it was, they weren't necessarily pagan, because my family is not pagan at all. And they, and they, and they've effectively uh, excommunicated me from a lot of, the, oh, yeah. their, their lives because of it but i grew up in such a way that you know our our circles were small we took care of each other we farmed we we husband cattle we had people that raised you know chickens and 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 all kinds of things that you know when you look back on I'm like wow that's some really old way stuff you know but not pagan but it's what pagans did it's 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 how you had to survive man like it's yeah. you didn't have a store that you could go to man if you wanted something to eat you had to grow it or kill it or hunt for it or fish for it right like that was just life and if you wanted to stay warm you had to cut wood you know uh to to heat your 
to heat your home with and stuff. So like a lot of those things that are for maybe a lot of people in this time, uh, in this day and time seem a bit, oh, it's old ways. I'm like, man, this is just how you live. This is how you had to survive. It, it yeah. Take the religion out of it. Yeah. You just had to survive. <laughs> you know, well, it's still like that for uh, at least half the human population anyway. Mm -hmm. It's not like it ever went anywhere. Right. Yeah, it didn't. I mean, it's, I mean, look, because look, if everything, sh if shit and hits the fan, go back, it could go back to that in right. Nashville tomorrow if they turn the power off. Oh, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> I don't know if you were here, uh, what was it like? Maybe a, it was less than a year ago when that, that, that RV uh, explosion downtown in Nashville. Yeah, yeah. I it, was living here, but yeah, I it remember. It, it, it took out infrastructure that affected like emergency responders like you couldn't dial 911 and call for help for anything and i'm like oh here we go here's where it starts and all it took was one old winnebago from like the 80s to do it yeah. <laughs> and that and you know nobody even planned it that way but i'm just like see that's that's a message right there that sends a message and maybe that's me being a bit stretching things with my crazy conspiracy theory mind which i don't try to satisfy too much but the signs are there yeah. and can you not like don't ignore it like if that's all it took to create that much pandemonium for that short period of time like if you really wanted to plan something it ain't that hard and, yeah. and where are you going to be when it happens how are you going to be able to pick up from where you are right now and and regardless again of the religious aspect of it, it's whether you call yourself christian pagan muslim whatever it's survival yeah. at that point it, it goes and it goes past who you call your god sure you know yeah it's like touching back on some of those things that we were mentioning earlier about our, our mystic experiences right our existence our shared existence in the world around us man there was there was things that i was experiencing dude that that at that time the gods weren't even a, a, a hindsight for me it was like I'm, t I'm i'm dealing with things that are bigger than the gods here yeah. primordial things <clears throat> right things that are older than even the gods themselves right you know like the very essences of universe exist like the life that the universe knows like the the dark the light the ice the fire yeah. those essences of things that are have been there and that's why we're here and whatever mythology whatever lore whatever creation myth whatever thing you want to put to it well i was going to tell you too on on that that um you know one of the one of the bands so there's primeval well there's that that one has a definitive um to me the lyrics really don't even get at it very much but i to be honest i also can't even remember what they are because i I've, there's just so much other crap in my head since then but um mm -hmm. the other two that i put out started last year one being vile haint and the other one is arcane marrow arcane marrow if you couldn't guess by the name is also like explicitly pagan <laughs> or whatever i mean i say pagan i still use the term pagan i don't really sure. yeah it, it, it's just for me Relatable. personally i'm not someone like i took the idea of polytheism very literally and and just uh kind of feel like I'm not gonna, if I feel an impulse to explore the Greek pantheon, I'm not gonna deny it just because my dad's blood is German or something or whatever. Mm -hmm. If I wanna go to the Badlands and learn about the great spirit taught through the perspective of the Lakota people, then I'm going to, like I'm alive, I'm here, it's America. It's, it's everything you described already. So I'm gonna grab what I can out of it and let my own intuition lead me from one thing to the next though though i will say I, I i tend to come back to this thing about odin over and over again and i don't even want to it just happens but um that actually leads me on a side note to this other thing i meant to to bring up about carl jung and his home that he started um living in like in the I guess when he was about 40 years old and he had already become fairly famous and successful and all of that and he he bought this house 
built, I think he built it himself actually. And it was in a somewhat remote location out in the Swiss mountains. And he was a stone carver. That was like his hobby. You know, he was like a really big dude. He was like, you know, my size, like six, two and maybe taller and was pretty muscular and whatever his, his hobby was stone carving. <laughs> so, um, he carved out of the stone that he used as, I want to say as the cornerstone, but it could have been some other thing somewhere. It was like, it was like prominently placed. That's all I remember from the story. In any case, it says what he carved into it says invoked or not the God will call. Meaning whether you want him to or not, he's coming. Yeah. <laughs> you don't, this idea about that, I think that pagan people, polytheistic people, heathen people, about conjuring, calling, invoking, I think that's part of it. And I think that's an aspect of religious practice that you know, kind of goes into the, like the ritual, ritual yeah. kind of category, right? And it's something where it's, it's us going out to them, right? Mm -hmm. But there's the, other side. there's the other side where they just grab you by the head and say, now's the time, motherfucker. And, <laughs> and like, you don't have Or shake the rat or shake and rattle the bars, as it were, right? Yes. So let me in, let me out, wake up, right. something. Right. So like with that being said, when when we started toying around with vile hate, which was really just like me having, you know, anxiety and I can't sit still and I just like need to do something in between the Primeval Well albums. It was like right after the first one I started writing, right after the first Primeval Well album and it came out like a, a month later, I had already written a lot of what became vile hate. At that time, though, there was a whole other set of riffs and it was all just going to be the one thing. And I realized, well, I have this one set of riffs they're like uh they're i feel like traditional is just a shitty stupid word at least as how it relates to my music because it's usually anything but um but this was the closest thing it wasn't like super crazy super dissonant like uh it wasn't overtly experimental put it that way right it was riffs that like a person that was just in a black metal because they like black metal, they could just listen to it and be like, yeah, it's black metal. Right. They right. wouldn't have to go, what the fuck is this? You know? And like give it 16 different words to describe it. It's like, it's, it's black metal. So that being said, I got, you know, a third of the way into recording the guitar parts for that album. And it's like, man, this like, I just feel like, it's like this music is like very I, th I think I hadn't even gotten that far I was still writing it I was still I was here in Knoxville and I was writing and I had had after the Badlands thing a, a, a number of other similarly induced similarly ending um, experiences uh, mostly here up in the mountains I, I usually go to a place up in Cock County um, I have this camp there. I just go to all the time. You'd love it. I actually, man, this is what I was talking about being long winded. I promise you, I'm going to get to the point, but gotta, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, enjoying the journey. <laughs> there's this camp that I found it's out in the middle of nowhere. All right. You got to drive all through the mountains, unpaved roads to get there. You come up to this big hill and you look down and out of a confluence between two mountain rivers sits a camp and it forms a circle and it's lined with trees in a circle, right? And then when you, you have to drive across through one of those rivers and you pull up into a park and you go walk to the back end of it and you realize there's a whole other literal tree, tree grove, all right? First there's a circle and then there's like an actual grove of oak trees and it's natural, like it's not planted, they're unevenly placed, but yeah. I mean, dude, it's spooky. I sat out there, tripping balls and realized that the moon was going to full moon was going to come straight up over it and like right 
<laughs> like, dude, you can't make this crap up. Yeah. So that kind of thing is what really animates not just Primeval Well, but specifically Arcane Marrow and some of Vile Hain. And when I was finishing up all the writing, I just really felt like for Arcane Marrow, like each song almost felt like, so for example, the first song on that album, really just for me, it had this warlike energy and feeling that I could only, it felt alien to me. Like I had, like I said, this kind of Odin experiences before, right? And I kind of felt like I sort of got to know him a little, if you will. Yeah. But this other was, it was different and, but similarly intense and very violent, but a different kind of thing. And it reminded me almost of the Bhagavad Gita, where it was like this very like, intense glorious religious war sort of feeling but for some reason it, it didn't sound like it, the music definitely isn't like inspired by indian music or anything but it sure. just it's, it so i could only conclude that it was like this thing where i this may sound really silly but i just felt like it was thor it was like channeling that because mm. I personally from the get-go with all this polytheistic pagan whatever always right from the jump had this thing about Odin, Votan and the very weird mysterious nature and dark um, and like uh, at times pretty disturbing trickiness that he oh, he's writes. mad he's absolutely mad and that's one of the yeah. kennings for you know in in the many the, the many names that he's known by i mean he's a madman he's yeah there's like, madness connected yeah. absolutely yeah that that ex, that ecstasy of madness right yeah. So yeah i felt like in a lot of ways i had kind of started to put my claws in that a little bit with primeval this thing though with Arcane Marrow was different. It just like had a very, I could only describe it to Zach, the kid that plays plays drums and helps me record those albums. Um, he's in Primeval Well. Uh, I was like, man, it's just like it's Thor. It's got to be. There's there's no other way. It can't be anything else. Like it's it's and thinking about that would just make more riffs, more imagery come out of my mind and and so that like that music, that album is like all just completely it's almost like like the, the mystical shamanic experience or whatever translated it itself for me in my own mind into sound so that it would get expressed yeah does does um <laughs> Cause I didn't really try to like do that. I didn't want, I never, I never like have sat down and said, I'm going to start playing Nordic ambient fucking guitar loops. You right. know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's just, not, it just organically kind of yeah, like, and I didn't, itself that way. I, I didn't do this in some kind of like mushroomed, uh, you know, ritual either. I'm talking about just sitting in, in my little music room here. And it's just like, yeah. just having this like full blown experience that translated into a, you know, Yet another ten. But does does Arcane Marrow and was it Vile Hate or Vile Hain? Hate, Hate, Hate. Vile Hate. Is yeah. it? Is there stuff out here? Because I mean, when people are listening and watching this or whatever, they want to. Is it? Is it? Is it absorbable anywhere? Can they download it? Can they listen to it? Yeah. So all that stuff is on the Moonlight Cypress Archetypes band camp. And they can okay. also look for those bands themselves. They're also I have social media pages for all of them too. So. Yeah, we're definitely going to link the Moonlight Cypress Archetypes um, Bandcamp yeah. in the show notes and in the description. So, you know, everybody listening, watching or whatever, oh, if right. any of this sounds like something that you want to, you know, sink your teeth into and explore, check out all of that. Because if it's if it's on that Bandcamp, then then that'll be kind of like your one stop shop for it. Yeah. But <clears throat> Arcane Marrow, Primeval Well, um, 
yeah Kyle, there's, Kyle there's, more. there's a bunch of them <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, you're a busy guy, and that's what I was saying before, like, before he ever came out. I'm like, he's got his hands in so many different things, and I even think that your your, your label is responsible for stuff that's not even your own, right? There's, there's um, what is it? Uh, is it Pie Fire? Yeah, we just released um, Pie Fire. That was the first one. De Devil's Looking Glass. I mean, that's me. That's, that's you, too, actually, right? You probably actually really like that stuff, too. That's, like, yeah. that's another one. That one... Was, they're all on the label right they're all on the yeah yeah, yeah. There, there's actually a song called Woden's Dog on there that was just like I just again sat out in the fucking backyard full moon you know having a campfire I, I, I believe it was September of 2020 and <clears throat> I had been what a year huh man yeah well <laughs> that was another thing I was that was another little topic point of discussion that i was going to mention is is that my girlfriend is really into this uh somewhat newly developing field called archetypal astrology which is a further development on what they call archetypal psychology which is a the next link in the chain after jung's yeah wow Psychology. Yeah. So this dude named James Hillman created what they call archetypal psychology, which is deceptively named in a certain sense because he really kind of in a lot of ways distanced himself from Jung and the archetypes. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit, he, he actually said stop calling it that because you need to just call it polytheistic psychology. Yeah. But, um, from there, people took a lot of that mentality and created <clears throat> what's now loosely called archetypal astrology mm. and some of the astrologers had pointed out that 2020 had the same solar events as if i'm not mistaken 1776 which you know every american would that would probably be pretty pivotal reference. i would say yeah <laughs> right <clears throat> so yes so like every month in 2020 I, stuff like that was happening where these songs that were unintentionally but but by the end of them kind of being sketched out very obviously having these heathen connotations uh and and for me I just a vibe a feeling like a feeling like it's not so much like these three runes or this uh passage from the have them all or whatever it's produced this effect it's more like uh the sound was creating itself using a certain several few tunings on the guitar or the banjo or whatever stuff that's like yeah. kind of common actually like um like in celtic music but also in old time mountain music um mm. here um it, it just like a a music theory person would call it modal and, and it has a very specific meaning there's no um it's an interesting development i was like really completely obsessed with john coltrane when i was a kid and he was famous for uh, among other things like what they call modal jazz and so his among many other contributions one of them was the observation that it falls almost more in line with like comparative musicology um which is that the music of the world everywhere is based on modal scales it's only only place <clears throat> in time where there's been very distinct chord progressions going from one thing to the next has come out of western european harmony which is a relatively modern <clears throat> iteration of music that um, is sits completely and totally within the Christian monastic era, starting like roughly seven to eight hundred years ago, about the end of the Viking era, when things really changed yeah. uh, in Europe. Now, the significance of that is the fact that that music all around the world registers for whatever reason in people's bodies when they hear it registers as 
immediately registers as religious music. Yep. Uh, across the globe. Yeah. And that's like in any culture, like whether it's in Asia, North or South Asia, and African music and South American music. And from what we know of Native American music here, it's like this set of scales that really invokes a sense of uh, earth religion or blood religion or ancient religion or whatever this and it's a mysterious thing people really all seem to react kind of the same way but you it's not really very present in country music but it is in old time mountain music i've also yeah. found that it's really common in bands like um, i'm probably going to botch the pronunciation but one of one of my favorites one of the ones that really got me into black metal this blood aus nord right I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they have a very droning, very modal black metal kind of sound. And I, I feel like pulling all that stuff together, something about all these different pieces finally clicked for me personally in 2020. And on every fucking one of those full moons, something like that happened where it was just like this song with this like weird random modal guitar tuning would just like present itself i couldn't get it out of my head and i go sit down have a fire outside under the moon and here comes like six verses of all these lyrics about odin i don't fucking write lyrics man i don't care about them <laughs> yeah like, i'm not a like i'm not a country songwriter dude you know i'm like a guitar player and i got forced into this because no one else would sing for me and <laughs> And I didn't just want the bard, it. man. You're that mountain bard, I guess you could say. <clears throat> well, that's what I'm saying. You know, going back to that previous vision, if you want to call it that, of Odin saying, let me out. Yeah. Like, Dude, I didn't want you in there. Like, this <laughs> fun for me either. But um, <laughs> it's like, I, I wouldn't have asked for this. Yeah. Um, you're doing it, man. Like you're, you're, you're making it work and you're, you're, I guess you're, you're, uh, in a way it's like answering a call you know like i didn't you didn't i didn't give you my number but i'm gonna answer you because you're calling me and then figure out what the hell's going on like what's yeah. what's going on with this and uh i mean shoot like we could probably literally go on with this stuff forever about because look at where it started i mean we started talking about just it was the music and then it was the mushrooms and then it's the mythology and now it's back to the music and it's coming. I mean, we could literally go for, I think hours on something like this. And if you're willing, I would love to have you back and explore some of these oh, other yeah. intricacies of things, because I feel like this is very insightful and very interesting to see. I, like, cause I love what you're talking about with how the music touches people, regardless of the culture, regardless of the religion. And I didn't realize that it was because of the, 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 uh, the, the the notes or or or, or the bars or the, or the how it was you know just it touches you in a certain way and it does i mean i mean it's can argue so, that there's this classical composer from canada and i watch his youtube videos all the time and it's <clears throat> a lot of what he talks about is musical psychology and a musical psychologist it, for first of all there's no such thing like on paper but it's the idea that the composer should have a sense of the psychological root effect that his music is going to have on other people because if you're writing and you don't know it's like saying words that you don't know what order to put them in you might know the words but like you may not be a very good sentence constructor right yeah, you know right words your grammar is off <clears throat> but yeah, you know like the your, vocabulary you know you're your message is just like unclear mm -hmm. right yeah so he talks about musical psychology and it's something that i had been thinking on already and it's like creating an element of mystery but not mystery in the like unbelievably cheesy worn out black metal try hard bullshit way of like trying to like be this you know entity online and like be mysterious or whatever like that shit's pretty tired but it's more like mystery like what is mystery mystery is like the core of all of this uh, uh, really it's the core of religion and they the, i mean to the point where they used to call them mystery religions like all the you know the again the greeks 
yeah. practiced mystery religions. The Romans practiced Mr. Egyptians, like the cults of this God or that God or whatever, practiced what we now call mystery religions. And it's just my opinion. And I, it, I, I don't think I'm the only one who thinks this, but it's just that that modal flavor fast tracks that in the, not just the mind, but literally in the physiology of a person's ears, which I realize that's a kind of a mouthful and a handful to like chew on, but it's like people are not used to hearing music that's constructed that way anymore. And there's something about it that resonates in the body itself yeah. in that way which is why when people listen to A Love Supreme by John Coltrane, they always talk about it as being, you know, a religious experience, which is exactly what he fucking meant it to be. And yeah. he knew exactly what he was doing with it. Well, I even look at, I mean, and it may be cliche, but like, I mean, just because I'm, I'm not a musical uh, aficionado by any means, but when you look at composers like Beethoven, who was deaf, he couldn't hear anything, but the music that he wrote, the vibrations, the feeling, how it speaks to the human psyche, how it speaks to us as, as sentient beings, right? Yeah. It's a construct of vibrations. It's a construct of things that you may, you may be able to receive, not just through your ear canals, but it may be going through that way, but the vibrations within there, your eardrums, like however the, all that shit works, yeah. you know, it's, it's resonating deeper than just, oh, that sounds nice. Well, and it's like it goes way deeper than that. It's interesting with Beethoven too, because of him being German, and it 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 mm. so uh, it fulfills any stereotype of what German music and culture should feel like. <laughs> like it's the most like chest pounding, hardcore, stout music yeah. they would have had at that time. That would have like you know like that you, was metal man like, it was, <laughs> I mean, like right that was their metal at the time you know? right right I mean, it's so like true to the stereotypes of their national character whereas um you know Ravel and WC so they're so French it's so obviously French and then you know and like my my favorite guy is Stravinsky which um, I think you saw my post that I made about this this new band that I started called Sky Thala, which is a yes. reference to the the Thala Ruin. Thala Ruin and the imagery uh, of it. Yeah, there's all kinds oh, of nods to it. Yeah. So that music is is based on Stravinsky. Um, it's like a I took ideas from him and merged it with my own ideas about black metal and whatever. Uh, and you know he's of course russian and that music has a very distinct national character too um fits along with you know their their cultural tendencies and so on and so forth mm -hmm. um uh but also you know that night for example so dude like i didn't i didn't just like sit down and think like what's the cutesiest fucking way i can incorporate a rune into my logo i didn't even want to i was just walking around in my backyard about a year ago and i looked up another big moon night all right like the, i'm telling you this shit just follows me <laughs> it sounds like I, it. <laughs> I looked up and uh there was a bunch of chemtrails in the sky and i like i have the picture i took a fucking picture with it with my phone of it because i was just like Man, this is this is you you all are messing with me again uh <laughs> And it, I mean, like it distinctly forms the rune, like, you know, yeah. And it was, I don't know, it was like one or two in the morning or something. And I was like, man, this is this shit. Okay. Um, yeah. That old man in that head of yours just let me out. And here he comes. Yeah. Again. yeah. I know. And it's like, man, what's the <laughs> chances that um, it's like so dystopian with the chemtrails, like, you know, talking about conspiracy theories or whatever like chemtrails is obviously you know great fodder for conspiracy talk and um what's the man what is the chances though that they would have just formed that shape and you know like mm -hmm. uh it just yeah. seems 
so ancient and so dystopian at the same time that I was just like, okay, well, there's a name for that band. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was going to tell you too that another thing that I've noticed is that every time that I feel the urge to go get lost up in the mountains, it's always a Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. I think we know then that the 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 Odin, Wotan, Wodan, Wodnaz, I mean, yeah, that 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 element is is alive and well, I guess, uh, with and for you. Because sure, uh, it's been for sure. And the fact that, you know, I mean, I, I alluded to it early on as we wrap things up, like I alluded early on, like you got a rune set <clears throat> yeah. that I had made. Um, one of my probably I would say, I don't know, because I don't keep track of how many I make or, or whatever. But I mean, that was an event that you came to the Nashville Pagan Pride event and and yeah. and and uh, purchased a rune set that day. And, you know, the 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 we don't talk a whole lot at least we haven't up to this point in that message that i got from you the other day i was like man that was so touching to know that because you know quite often I, I i make these things and they and they go to their homes right they go to the people who i make yeah. them for and i don't know nothing about them after that and that's okay i don't need to but to know that um they are working with and for you and and that you work with them and and they have a, a living uh part of your life like it was it was touching and it was it meant a lot to know that and the runes and odin i mean if you know the lore and the mythology behind you know hanging from yggdrasil and taking up the runes and nine days and nights on the tree it's like it's all the pieces are coming together <laughs> i mean it's pretty yeah it's pretty um it's it's really kind of mind-boggling yeah. <laughs> me just being the one on the other end of it all you know i mean you're the guy doing the thing and i'm just the guy that made the rune set that you that you fortuitously came upon and, and picked yeah. that day you know so it's it's all really neat how the threads have been come interwoven as it were mm -hmm. um through things and so you know with with that being said i it, you know i think we're at a good spot to to call this one up or call yeah. this one at a, at a, at a, at a stopping point. It's it, we've, we've covered a lot of bases and that's what I love about what I can do here with people is in, and and have these types of discussions because it just goes into sometimes, man, it just goes into such uh, interesting realms, you know, these, these rabbit holes, these, these random discussions that just naturally find themselves about through stuff like this. It's, it's, mm -hmm it's intriguing and it's, it's fascinating and I enjoy it. And I appreciate, you know, having folks like you on here to, to share and talk about it. And like I said before, you know, um, we can work something out again to have you back and maybe have some other guests. Cause we had, you know, we've had up to three guests on this podcast before, I think three or four guests, including myself and, you know, yeah. something like this with some other like minds <clears throat> could be really fun. I think if you're willing. Yeah, that's great. So I'm going to leave all of the uh, the Moonlight uh, Cypress Archetype Bandcamp information in the show notes, in the description for those that are viewing, watching, listening. Uh, you want to check out what Ryan is up to and in, in all these various musical projects and kind of sink your teeth into the depths of this stuff and, and see what it speaks to for you. Definitely be sure to check out um, the, the Moonlight Cypress Archetypes Bandcamp page. Is there anything else that people can follow you on? Any other social media, Instagram, Facebook? I know you got the Facebook page. so Instagram, Facebook, and um, YouTube. Okay, great. So all of that will be annotated as well in the show notes. So follow him, subscribe, uh, you know, share, like, comment, that whole, the same thing that I ask all of my listeners to do, you know, like, comment, share, follow, subscribe, engage with mm -hmm. those that are, of interest to you right because it helps us all so um i want to say thank you to ryan uh ryan don't go anywhere i'm gonna bid the the listeners and the, and the viewers and all my followers and stuff a fond farewell until the next episode but i'll i'll stick around with you here for just a minute okay um but yeah everybody that's that's listening today it was a little bit of a longer episode but i feel it was a great episode and i had a lot of fun and i hope you guys did too so <clears> if you do uh, enjoy what we do out here on this platform. 
Again, be sure to engage in that sort of way. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Check the description and show notes area for the link tree link for all the ways that you can support uh, Midgard Musings and the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. There is literally a half dozen or more ways for you to do so, both uh, free for your uh, convenience. And if you wish to support monetarily, you can become a patron on Patreon. You can become a member of the channel on YouTube. You can buy merchandise, all of that fun stuff. Be sure to check it all out. Um, and until we all talk again, hail. Thank you for your support. May the gods and your ancestors continue to walk with you.